All right, today we're doing my favorite g Easy songs. Wait, what? Oh, Green Day. Oh, that's better. All right, we're doing my favorite Green Day songs. As you guys know, Green Day is my favorite band. Um, I have a list here of my top 20 favorite songs. Don't look at it, don't peek. I'm gonna make this short and sweet. Basically, we're just gonna run 20 to one. And yeah, it's my opinion. And you can have a different opinion because a lot of these you're gonna be like, what the fuck? But yeah, these are my top 20 favorite Green Day songs. Take me to the tracks at Christy Road. Okay, number 20, we have Christy Road. Um, this comes off of their 1992 album, Kerplunk. It starts off pretty slow, and then in the middle of the song, it kind of picks up, and it just talks about like a place where Billy and the band used to go to like smoke weed and other things. Uh, you could go and drink beers and have sex for the first time and, uh, and, uh, and smoke a little bit of dope and just dream a little bit. Yeah, it's just a great song about like a place that you love. So, moving on. I don't, I don't know what to say about these songs. 19, come on. Okay, 19 is Forever Now. Um, this comes off their album, Revolution Radio, as I have here. Forever Now is basically the newer version of Jesus of Suburbia. Um, it's split up into a bunch of different parts, and it's just an anthem. And I think it's the best song off of Revolution Radio. My name is Billy and I'm freaking out. Songs like Bouncing Off the Wall and Too Dumb to Die I think are great, but um, Forever Now gets the top spot on Revolution Radio, so good job. 18, we have Hitchin' a Ride. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard this song before. It is probably the most fun song to watch them live. It starts off, again, really slow and then about like two thirds of the way, it all just comes together and they go crazy. And um, here's a clip of Billy here. My tongue is swelling up. One, two, one, two, three. That was in 2005 at, um, God, what was it called? Bullet in a Bible. And yeah, it's just one of their best live performances ever. And it's a pretty great song. You should go check it out. So I got it, I'm it to you. 17 is Scattered. This comes off of Nimrod from 1997. I didn't really think of what I was gonna say for these songs, but um, yeah, Scattered, it's a great song. Go check it out. I don't know, goddamn, don't pressure me. All right, 16, we have The Last of the American Girls. This would have been in my top 10 a couple years ago. Um, I love this song. I think it's one of their best. Um, it definitely is one of the catchiest. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just really great. Go check it out. God, I don't know what I'm saying. I just turned on the camera and I was like, I'm gonna film this, so here you go, but. Alright, 15 is Homecoming. I'm gonna give away another spoiler, I know, but Homecoming, I think, is Jesus of Suburbia's little brother, who is not quite as good, but is still amazing. Um, it's a nine minute song off of American Idiot that has like five or six different parts and it's kind of just amazing. It has one of the best guitar lines I've ever heard. Um, I'll play it here. Hey! St. Jimmy dies in it, so that's kind of tragic. Um, the whole American Idiot album is based around like this character, St. Jimmy, and he's kind of a badass. And in the second to last song in the album, they kill him off and it's kind of sad, but it's really just, it's just an anthem, and I love it. So, yeah, that got the uh, number 15 spot. You lied. All right, number 14, we have You Lied. This isn't off one of their actual studio albums. It's off a B-side album called Shenanigans. It came out in, I believe, 2002. I don't really have that much to say about this song. I just used to listen to it all the time, like three or four years ago when I was in high school. And I just thought it was really cool, like the, the guitar line at the beginning, I thought is awesome. It was just really catchy, and I know it's kind of like F you to someone I'm guessing is specific, um, but yeah, you, you Lied is just a great track, I don't know. Alright, 13 is Waiting. Waiting used to be one of my top five favorite songs. It's gone down a little bit as my 
my tastes have changed, but it's still in the top 20 and the top 15. Waiting's off their 2001 album, Warning, or maybe it was 2000. Fact check me on that, I think it was 2000. God, I didn't think of what to say for all these songs, but just like, um, I'll, I'll play the, the best part here. And uh, I don't know, just go check out the music video if you want. I don't really know what to say about these. Let them be poison and it tastes like lemonade. All right, 12 was back in the USA. Back in the USA is, I believe, the last song that they actually dropped. Because back a couple years ago, they released God's Favorite Band, which is basically like a best of of their stuff up until 2017. Um, this was a new track for that album, so it's basically like the last one that they've released. And it's just really cool and really political. Not that I really care about politics that much, but it's just like, it's kind of cool to see and like laugh at. I hope you had the time of your life. 11 is good riddance. Everyone was probably thinking it would be in like at least the top 10, probably the top five. Um, this is the song that I say will play at my wedding no matter what, no matter who I end up marrying. If you're out there, then hey, I, um, it, it's playing at our wedding. It's unpredictable, the end is right. It's just the best ending track to like everything. It plays at graduations, it plays at weddings. One funny story I have from that, me and my buddy Henry. Ready to gun you down. Oh my God. We work for the U Tampa hockey team, like our school. And whenever we go to play UCF, Central Florida, whenever we go to play at their rink, they play that song after the game. We've won both games, so I don't know if they play it after they lose, but each time, like, when the game was over and everyone was leaving, they would play good riddance over the loudspeaker. So then, um, this year in the playoffs, me and Henry were in charge of, like, the playlist for the playoffs. We were doing the UCF versus U Miami game, and Miami beat UCF. So we played good riddance as like everyone was leaving. And I don't know if, I don't know if UCF like got it or like heard it, but it was just pretty funny to play and kind of like in your face. But yeah, good riddance is number 11. Okay, top 10. This is huge. Um. You're your next kid and you never even got started again. Number 10, we have X-Kid. X-Kid comes off of Trey, which is probably one of their least celebrated albums ever. Um, it's not their best album, but X-Kid is a great song. I talked about it in one of my other videos, and it's kind of just about like, it talks about this, this guy that went through a lot of struggles in his life, and I think it was one of Billy's friends, and actually ended up ending his life. And it's a really sad song, but like, it kind of just makes you put everything into perspective and like, it's just kind of a sad song, but it's one of my favorites. So, X-Kid, you're number 10. <laughs> number eight and nine are both kind of like in your face, like a few songs. Uh, number nine is Jinx. Jinx is a very in your face song. Oh God, the lyrics aren't on Apple Music. But yeah, it's just a really fast, really in your face song. And I kind of love that about it. Like, I'd say like half of their songs are like that and half of them are really slowed down, like Good Riddance and stuff like that. But it's really cool to just hear them go off on this. I mean, the whole um, Insomniac and Nimrod era of them is kind of just like anger and just like yelling at people. And like, this is like definitely a good example of that. So I love this song. All right, number eight is Jackass. Jackass is a very fun one. It's sort of the same as Jinx in the way where it's like being mad at someone, but it's in a much more like acoustic and funny way. It being on their Warning album kind of, it speaks for itself. Like it's a very acoustic, very like laid back album. But if you listen to the lyrics of this song, it's very angry at, I'm guessing one specific person and if you have that person in your life, then singing this song about them is honestly kind of hilarious. But some of the lyrics are really funny, like... Okay, moving on, because I don't know what to say about these. Jesus. You better run for your fucking life. It's not Alright, number seven, we have Letterbomb. Letterbomb is probably my favorite. If I could play it on guitar, which I can't because I'm not good at guitar. I can play a few songs on guitar, but if I could play guitar well, this would probably be my favorite song to play. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's great. 
listen to this song because it's awesome. Number six is the Static Age. No one saw this one coming. No one even, I bet no one even knows what this song is. Shout out to Anthony Nelson because he got me into this song. This is off 21st Century Breakdown. It's honestly one of my favorite songs ever. The whole theme of that album, it's sort of like American Idiot where it follows like two main characters. Like it follows, um, it follows Christian and Gloria, the two characters. You have to listen to it front to back. And this is one of the last songs on the album and it sort of just pulls everything all together for me. I don't even know how to describe it, but when, when his voice gets higher in like the, the second or third verse after like the drums pick up, it is one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard in my life. So that comes in at number six. All right, top five, here we go. Did you guys see this coming? Here we go. Coming clean, number five. I honestly wanted this to be higher because it's one of my favorite songs ever. It's about like, at least for Billy, it was like finding himself and finding how to like be a man he says and it's about his bisexuality and like coming out to his parents and like saying they don't understand like i said in my other video um at least in high school i had a lot of trouble like figuring out who i was and like i went through a lot of struggles with my parents and like feeling like they didn't really understand me so it kind of hit home in a way not that i'm bisexual even though that would be fine. For this song to resonate with you, it doesn't have to be the same subject, you know? It can be anything that you're confused about or like trying to find yourself in any way. Number four is Welcome to Paradise. Everyone saw this one coming, I think. I think everyone knows this is one of my favorite songs. It's one of the best songs. Well, of course it's one of their best songs, but I think it's one of the best songs like of anyone, of all rock songs. What can I say about Welcome to Paradise? I already said it in my last video, go watch that. It's just amazing, like I don't even know. Just the intro, the intro guitar, it's amazing. Someone teach me guitar. If you know someone who gives good lessons in the New England area, let me know and I will take lessons. Number three is Stay the Night. It's a sad song for me. Um, this song basically brings like every sentimental time that I've ever had in my life, whether it be like with a girl or like, well, yeah, it's basically just with girls. It makes me so fucking sad sometimes. Like this song, I don't know. Like if you're going through a breakup or something and you listen to this song, it, it'll get you because it's pretty great. And they also have an acoustic version on, um, what's it called? The Demolicious album, which is like demos of the trilogy. I gotta know if you're the one that got away. And it's pretty damn good. So, um, so the person who um, I shared this song with, that it became pretty special to us. Um, hope you're out there watching and hope you're listening to this song because it's pretty great. All right, number two. You already know one of them's coming, but where's it gonna be? Yep, Jesus of Suburbia is number two. Everyone thought it was gonna be one? Nope, it's number two. Okay, before I go further, let me say that I think Jesus of Suburbia is their best song ever. That doesn't make it my favorite song ever though. I think Jesus of Suburbia is every single one of their styles that they've ever done together in one nine minute anthem. I honestly think it's their best song ever and it should be their most celebrated song ever. I just don't think people have the attention span to listen to a nine minute song at a time. But anyone who's a fan of this band knows that this is probably their best song. Um, it has like five different parts that honestly, all by themselves, they wouldn't really make sense, but put together in the way that they are, even though they're all completely different, it's, it's one of the best songs of all time. So good job Green Day, you honestly made, it should be the best rock song of all time. You know, I'm gonna get a lot of hate saying that, but, and my favorite part of the song is um, Dearly Beloved. Dearly Beloved, are you listening? It really slows it down. I like when Green Day slows it down. Okay, before I jump into number one, we're gonna have some honorable mentions. Play a little bit of those here, I guess. They, they almost made the cut, I'm sorry. These are great songs, but they didn't make the top 20. So here you go. All 
All right, number one, drum roll. Here we go again, infatuation touches me just when I thought that it would end. Did, did you think it was gonna be like Basket Case or American Idiot or something? Did you really? Going to Pestalacqua, I don't even know how to describe why this song is my favorite song ever, but it just sort of has been for like so many years. And I, I wish they still played this song live because I wanna hear it live so bad. I honestly prefer the live versions of it better than the recorded version, like the actual studio album version, but it's still like literally my favorite song of all time. It's very close with Jesus of Suburbia. It's just very punk. If I was listening to this back in 1990, which obviously I'm not old enough to have done that, it honestly would have given me promise that like this band could be something serious. Because that whole album, 39 Smooth, it kind of just feels like they're trying to find their sound and they don't really know like what they are yet or how they want to sound yet. Besides Paper Lanterns, that's a great song. It just shows you that they have like promise and they have potential. I don't even know how to describe it. Most people don't even know how to say the name of the song. They read it and they're like, going where? Exactly, no one knows this song. I feel like no one really knowing it kind of makes it special to me. I mean, obviously there are a lot of Green Day fans out there who like know the song and would listen to the song, but at least for most of the people I talk to and most of the people that I know that listen to the band or I've shown the band don't really know this song. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's my favorite song. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And it, it kind of makes it special to me and it, it feels cool to me. So that's the end of the list. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully listening along. Um, I hope this gave you some Maybe some new music to listen to if you don't listen to them already. But yeah, thanks for watching my top 20. Going to Pass Lacqua is my favorite Green Day song, if you didn't know. I'll be back with more videos soon, and um, I hope to be making more vlogs and more of these types of videos, maybe. But I don't know. For now, I'm signing off. So thanks for watching. Share the love, and good night. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life.